In today's video, I'm going to show you that if you've got a search campaign already running on the Google Ad Network and it's not working, then maybe you've fallen for some of the classic mistakes that people make. So in this video, we're going to cover six classic mistakes that people make in their Google search campaigns. And if you stay to the end, I'm going to show you a bonus mistake as well that people make. So definitely stick around to the end. If this is your first time to my channel, hi, my name's Alana Wexler and welcome to the Teach Traffic channel where we talk about all things paid traffic and I help people generate profitable paid traffic campaigns. So if you like this content, be sure to hit the, the like button and the subscribe button. Okay, let's get stuck into the content of today's video. And as I said, we've got six classic mistakes that I see people make. Here I am in a live Google ad account and I thought this is just a good account to use as an example. So the first mistake that people make is they have not set up conversion tracking. Conversion tracking is how you're going to get the transparency to know if your ads are actually working or not. The classic line that I hear people make is I'm running traffic to my website and I've got no idea if my ads are working. If you've ever wondered that, then uh, conversion tracking will answer that question for you. It's sort of beyond the scope to go through how you're going to set up conversion tracking. I've actually got a video on how you can import your goals from analytics into Google Ads to be your form of conversion tracking and I'm going to link to it uh, above on this video somewhere and also in the description below. Uh, but essentially you go to tools and settings and go to conversions and from there you can import your goals as I said from analytics into Google Ads or you can also set up conversion tracking within the Google Ad interface. But as I said, it's beyond the, the scope of this video. Okay, so that's classic mistake number one. Classic mistake number two is people inadvertently have combined the search network with the display network. And it's a very, very sneaky setting that Google have when you go through the steps of creating your campaign. It's defaulted to have selected both platforms. But if your campaign is actually running, how you can find out if you've fallen for this is you go into the search campaign and you go to the settings section. And in here, you'll find all the settings, obviously, that are applied to your search campaign. OK, so uh, under networks here, we click this and you can see that I have already deselected the, the display network. Now, if you go here and you see that this display network is checked, then unfortunately you are running uh, search and display together, which you really don't want. OK, so you would deselect the display network. If you have fallen into this case, I'm going to suggest you probably create a new search campaign because then the data won't be mixed together. Uh, but yeah, you just basically deselect this when you go through the settings. OK, so that's classic mistake number two that people make. The third classic mistake that people make is still in the settings section under locations. The default setting is often all countries and territories. So I would imagine chances are you don't want to be advertising to the whole world, especially if you've got a local type business. So you've got to put in a location. I, my personal preference is to have one country per campaign or one sort of location and purely because that's for a budgeting reason. I might want to ensure that one country is not greedy in terms of budget and then gives other countries possible airtime. Uh, or you might find you if you sort of advertising even only within one country, you might want to create separate campaigns for different cities, etc. OK, so you, but you definitely don't want all countries and territories mixed together because that's just going to be a world of pain. OK, let's go through classic mistake number four people make, which is their bidding. OK, especially if you are starting out. Once again, the default setting is probably uh, set to be using some of Google's automated bid strategies, which you don't want. OK, starting out, if your account has less than 30 conversions in a 30 day period and you're trying to sort of teach Google who you want in terms of um, conversion data, uh, you want to do manual CPC bidding. OK, so, you know, if we combine some of the mistakes together, people haven't set up conversion tracking and they're doing automated bidding. So Google's kind of got no way of 
really improving their bidding system when using their artificial intelligence and then that just blows out your costs and can melt your credit card basically so starting out manual cpc bidding if you have more than 30 conversions in a 30-day period then possibly it is worth doing automated bidding uh, and generally the one that i like to do uh, is target cpa bidding but once again this is sort of nuanced depending on what kind of business you have if you're in an e-commerce business you might want to do target roas if you're in sort of a, a service business where you're trying to get leads uh, then target cpa bidding uh, is probably the one the way to go okay so new account manual cpc bidding you want to do that uh, so you can often change your bid strategy by clicking on this um, and um, it's kind of walking me through back to previous bidding options and i want to do manual cpc bidding here okay and i also want to deselect enhanced cpc because this is giving google permission to bid more than my maximum cpc and starting out i'm really trying to control costs okay so um so yeah that is that i'm just going to cancel that okay classic mistake number five that people make is they don't create keyword themed ad groups so if we go to uh so we go into our ad groups we've got three ad groups so each of these ad groups have got themed keywords okay so in our facebook retargeting ad group the keywords that we have inside here are all about facebook retargeting okay if we go to the google retargeting it's all it's all about google retargeting okay and that's because i want to write an ad that really tightly relates to the keywords that i'm bidding on so when i'm bidding on google retargeting in my ad i want to mention that i've got google retargeting um, uh, video tutorials and step-by-step -step training and, and all that kind of stuff okay so it really is tightly related as a side note you can probably see here that i've all these keywords are below first page bid and that's actually very intentional because I'm still getting impressions. I mean, even though it doesn't show many today, it's still early on in the day. Uh, but while I'm starting out, I'm actually not bidding the maximum um, uh, cost per click that Google is suggesting because um, I'm still in the early days of this campaign and I'm trying to refine some some keywords and, and, and ads. So it's still getting impressions. They're just trying to make me spend more money. No, thank you, Google. Okay, so that is classic mistake number five so please don't fall into the trap of you know having one campaign and one ad group and 300 unrelated keywords in their one ad group that just ends up being a complete mess and what's going to happen is you're not going to get a good click-through rate you're not going to get a good conversion rate and google's not going to like your your account and they're going to whack you with a bad quality score which you do not want Okay, so keyword themed ad groups so that you good, get good ad relevance, you get good click through rate of your ads, good quality score and, uh, and happy days. Okay, so classic mistake number six is that people only have one ad variation. So if we go to ads here, we can see I've got two ads here and I'm split testing different headlines and, and descriptions, etc. So um, yeah. Obviously, I just, you know, have these as an ex a bit of an example account. Uh, but really, ideally, is that you would be split testing wildly different kind of ad copy and psychological motivators. OK, so if you're not sure where you're sending the traffic to, you can just click on your ad and it will take you to the landing page. So I'm sending traffic to our 14 day challenge um, where obviously I teach people how to do retargeting. Uh, so that's where I'm sending the traffic to. OK, as promised. The bonus mistake that I see people make, so please don't fall into this, is they don't add negative keywords. So preventing their ad for showing up for all the wrong things. So if I go back to keywords and I go to negative keywords, you can see here that I've got uh, one keyword here, but I'm using a negative keyword list. So it's easy for me to manage my negative keywords using a negative keyword list. So I can apply that negative keyword list to multiple campaigns rather than having to manually put them into separate campaigns. OK, but at the very least, just add them at the campaign level. It's super easy to do. You just click plus and you can add a negative keyword here and uh, you click save and then it's been added. OK, so there you have it actually seven classic mistakes that people make with their search campaign so that you can check for your existing search campaign if you have made those mistakes 
Let me know in the comments below if you've fallen for any of these common traps um, and if it was easy for, to fix it. And if you like this video, I'd love a thumbs up icon. And thank you so much. Talk to you later.